Today's guests are the McHenrys. Joining me now is good friends of the show, Kale and Jocelyn McHenry. Guys, really appreciate you uh, reaching out and wanting to come on with me. So you guys, I've just looked it up. Newlywed, you can be a newlywed for up to four years, and it would be socially acceptable. So let's start with um, some things around the wedding and just getting uh, to that point for you guys. Kale, obviously, uh, Mr. Al Hammond took great care of a lot of people at the wedding from what I saw. So how did you ask him for his blessing heading into it? Um, I, uh, I texted him one day and asked if he had some time that week to uh, go grab some lunch somewhere. And he said, sure, where do you want to go? And I said, uh, you know what, it's your call, Al. And he said, how about we go to Arby's? And I was like, I wouldn't want to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage anywhere else than the fine establishment that is Arby's. So after a couple of roast beefs and cheeses, uh, I finally worked up the courage to ask him, and he said yes, believe it or not. And was it, was he like, uh, maybe it's just like the horsey sauce talking, or what? Um, well, at that point, we'd been together for almost five years, so I don't think he was overly surprised. It's also the only time I've ever asked him to go out to lunch, so. Okay, got it. So uh, what, what was the actual meal plan there? You had a couple of sandwiches because, like, you were, Nervous about how to bring it up, or how'd that go? Yeah, I, I, I had a, a large roast beef and cheese, um, obviously some curly fries uh, with some RV sauce. You can't skip the RV sauce. And, uh, yeah, we kind of sat there and chit-chatted for a while, and uh, finally we both had to go back to work, and that's when I asked him. I got to think about, like, the most consequential thing I've ever done over an Arby's meal, but it's probably not going to be that. You know, I don't think most people uh, can measure up to that. I'm trying to think of, like, I don't know if I'm, like, planning my friggin' bathroom trip before going after that, but I don't know. Um, Jocelyn, what did you let Kale plan for the wedding? You know, Kale, he didn't really care, and I don't know if it's more of, like, a guy thing. You know, like, honey, you got it. Like, whatever you want, I'm good with. I will say Kale was very eager and really wanted DMX at the wedding to the point where every month... Leading up to the wedding, he would tweet them and say, you know, hey, man, or hey, dog, we're, like, waiting for your RSVP for the wedding. Like, that was what he was really persistent on. Uh, they did not make an appearance, but uh, we forgive them. He hasn't been active on Twitter since 2017, so my hopes were low anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I was a little disappointed when he didn't surprise us. Kale, were you maybe a little heartbroken, or were you in lockstep with Jocelyn not wanting to hear Taylor Swift at all? Uh, you know, that's something we agreed upon early. Um, we talked to the great Nick Holberg, our DJ. Uh, hire him for all your weddings. Um, that's a free plug for Nick, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and we told him, no Taylor Swift, no Black Eyed Peas. Play whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So, uh, foundational step. Just like having that agreed hatred for an artist, it, it, it's got to be great for you guys. You're on the same page. Yeah, that's what our uh, relationship is built on, mostly. Fantastic. So you were planning on getting out to Iceland before all this crap went down with COVID, you know? And how, so instead you pivot and go to Glacier, Montana for a quick trip over there. How uh, awesome was that trip? And did you have maybe that in mind for a while, or did it just kind of crop up? Well, we actually found out... Um, like about a month before we were supposed to depart to Iceland that it was not happening, um, which is kind of weird. Like we didn't hear anything from our travel agents. We just kept saying, well, no good, no news is good news. Like we're obviously going to keep going, like we're going to go. Um, and then like I got, I kept getting notifications from Delta saying like your flight's been canceled. And I'm like, okay, obviously we're not going. Um, so yeah, we kind of started like thinking of places where we've never been, um, and, I mean, Florida did cross our minds, but we were like, well, if we go there, like, we're going to need to be masked. Like, it's not going to be, like, that great of a trip. Um, so, yeah, we ended up getting a full refund with Iceland, and then we just decided um, to head out to the Glacier area. And Kale's been out there before, um, and I haven't. So, you know what? It was it was beautiful. It was perfect. It was the greatest mini-moon experience we could have asked for. And we do have intentions to go back to Iceland someday. Did you ever have a consideration of involving uh, Gus in the ceremony at all? Like ring bearers or anything like that? Or was that not a safe bet? You 
know, he's eaten enough shoes and enough magazines and TV remotes around the house. We just figured it was unsafe to trust him with anything at the wedding. Yeah, yeah, that's probably fair enough. He, he, mean, he does mean well, don't get me wrong. He holds a special place in our heart, but he was safe at the uh, dog daycare for the weekend, and he had a great time. Yeah, fantastic. I was just I was just home for a wedding not too long ago. My friend uh, Brent and Casey got married. Also got to go back for the bachelor party week, and that was fantastic. And their dogs, boy, they've had to have like torn ACLs, and like their stomachs have been messed up because they always eat like the padded plastic mats that obviously they're not supposed to have, but they must taste delicious. But uh, wow. they they've been up against it a couple of times. Uh, Jocelyn. Kale had the idea of proposing in front of a ton of your kiddos in Velva, like a school assembly. Uh, it was everybody's got video of it. It was a great uh, scenario. Uh, did you see that coming at all? I did not. I was completely blindsided. Um, I looking back now, it's funny to hear all the planning that truly went into our proposal and engagement and. I remember vividly still, um, over a year later that morning, um, my co-teacher, Amy, said, we have an assembly, like, we need to get there early, like, let's bring our kids down and get good spots. Well, that was her trying to say that she needed to be front and center to videotape the entire thing, and I still remember sitting there watching the slideshow that played, and then at the very end, they called me up, and I remember thinking, um... Because they said it was like, yeah, we want to interview the, like the first year teacher, and I was like, oh, like that's kind of weird. Like no one told me that was going to happen. And as she was questioning me, I truly thought they were going to pie me in the face. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it got to the point where they, you know, she asked the last question, which was Kale behind me, and completely caught me off guard. But yeah, he really planned. Um, a lot of planning went into it, as far as telling my friends where to park at the school so I wouldn't see their cars in the parking lot. Um, he waited in the back. Um, what's it called, like the laundry area behind the stage yeah. area. He had to wait back there for an hour. Like, a lot went into it, and, yeah, I can, I still can't believe to this day he had it pulled off, and um, our five-year anniversary was, like, four days before he proposed, and I remember going to work that, like, Monday after our anniversary, and my corkers all knew about the proposal, and they were like, so did he propose at dinner? And I said, no, he's not going to propose ever, and here they knew that he was going to propose, like, four days later, so... Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, where were like your friends at? Like, if they were hiding their cars, but then Kale was backstage. Where were they at? That you you didn't see them like throughout that hour assembly or whatever. Yeah. So at the time, my classroom. Um, if you looked out my windows, you could see the parking lot. So he um, and my two best friends and Kale's mom all got to the school. He was told to get there pretty early. Um, and then they were told to park in the back of the school. So, like, on the back side of our gym is where they had to park and go in these back doors. And so I didn't see him at all because the stage was closed. The door was shut. Um, I guess my friends were telling me, like, people would, like, peek in, like, open the door. And they'd yell at them to shut the door so I wouldn't, like, see anything. But, yeah, they were very discreet, to say the least. So, just to be sure, like, they don't always have the Velva rookie teachers in front of everybody at the end of the year. It was just you? It was just me. And I do remember, like, I guess, like, I did see some people, like, looking back, or, like, my um, Corker's daughters were, like, watching, and they were, they were told, like, they all knew about it, so they would tell, like, their, like, daughter, like, yeah, come watch, like, you know, Miss Hammond's gonna get engaged, so, yeah, there were a lot of people there that don't really aren't there. Yeah, so, uh, Kale, Jocelyn brought up a little bit about how her friends were kind of playing to the fact that they knew what was gonna happen, like, asking about, like, what's up with the five-year anniversary dinner and it didn't happen or whatever. What were the steps that you had to go through, like, with the school to uh, put that together? Uh, so I contacted uh, one of Jocelyn's friends that teaches out there, and uh, she helped me get in contact with the principal. And I actually I, uh, I took a day off of work to go out there and meet the principal, but I had brought Jocelyn a bouquet of flowers at the time, too, just because I needed a reason to be out there. So she caught me, it wouldn't look suspicious that I was talking to the principal. So that's where I started. Um, and then over the course of a few months, uh, her couple of her coworkers and I would talk here and there about uh, what we wanted to do for the engagement. Um, her coworkers came up with some ideas. I came up with some, and we kicked her around a few ideas for a while until we came up with the interview idea. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it, it seems like it like went off without a hitch, right? 
It was perfect. Yeah, I did. I, other than the fact that we had to sit behind the stage for an hour and uh, listen to every single Velvet Elementary kid get called up to accept their awards for reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you just you just hate that. I mean, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, part, shout part, out to Velvet Elementary kids for reading books, books but. You're like, I'm here for something that's more important for crying out loud. All these little kids have to have their neat little certificates. They have to have their moment. And all the teachers had to shake their hands, so it took a while. Oh, my. Yeah, I made sure to, I made sure to glare at every single student on my way out to propose. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, imagine, imagine an era where we can shake hands with people. Unbelievable. So, um, Kale, in that hour, I mean, were you were you nervous still going into it? Like, that's a pretty big moment for you. And I guess, what did you guys even talk about if you were hanging out there? Um, th- there wasn't a lot said. I was pretty nervous. Um, I th- it, it, honestly, though, I think Justin's friends were more, more nervous than I was. Um, and my mom also came with. Um, she was kind of the one that would, would try to talk a little bit, and the three of us were just so nervous. But, um, but yeah, it definitely built the tension because – uh, the time we were told to show up, the well, Jocelyn's coworker said it would be perfect because it would be right near the end of the assembly. But they ended up having a late start, so that's why we had to sit through the whole thing. Jocelyn, did your reaction to that happening maybe fit with what you, I don't know, maybe imagined how you would feel in the proposal moment? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think I wish for every girl in their life to just be completely, like, surprised and not see it coming. I think that's just you're going to get the most natural reaction from somebody like the most genuine reaction is that you didn't see it coming um i guess it's you know if you see your engagement coming like that's cool too but it's more fun i think to be surprised and i definitely was and it's still something i remember last year on like the first day of school a lot of kids were like so did you get married in the gym and they all thought i was married already and they all wanted to come to the wedding and yeah it's really fun how it all worked out and you know that place granted i don't know how long i'll teach in velva i'd love it out there um but I don't know how long I'll be there, and I know that that place and that school and the gym will always hold a special place in my heart. Absolutely. I mean, I we just had uh, Jay from Slamabama on not too long ago, and he was saying, like, when he and Rosanna got married, like, their whole thing was, it was all decorated up down at the courthouse, and oh. the celebration was, like, their own concert. That's awesome. So, I mean, there wasn't too much circumstance in the actual, I don't know, moment of it. But, uh, right. yeah, they had, a, they had a great old time as anybody would at a Slam Obama concert. So That's right. That happens in the Velva Gym. Thought yep. that would be a good segue to get into a little bit of sports portion with you guys. Uh, Jocelyn, what's it been like so far as being a volleyball coach? Brand new thing for you. Well, our season, um, it actually just ended last week on Tuesday was our last game. Um, we did have a winless season and that that's okay. Um, I was a first time volleyball coach. Um, I guess the opportunity kind of was brought to me. They were looking for somebody, um, at the time they were looking for an assistant coach and I kind of, um, you know, said I was interested, but it was like right when we were getting married, um, and then I just kind of, like, after we got back from Montana and everything, I just said, like, hey, is the position still open? They said no, but they had middle school open if I was interested. And I was like, well, I do want to get into coaching. Um, at some point in my teaching career, I'd love to start coaching. So I said, sure, I would love to do it. And it was a really good learning experience. Um, I learned a lot with the girls. It was kind of nice. I was It was 7th and 8th grade, but I was primarily the 8th grade coach, was which was great because all of the girls – played in seventh grade so they kind of knew good drills to teach me to teach them kind of thing like I was almost like they were teaching me half the time um by the end of the season you know it did go fast I do miss them already but um it's gonna be nice to have my nights back to normal and being home at a decent time instead of almost seven seven every night by the time I get going but Mm -hmm. yeah it was a good season and it was a lot of fun so no one's been asking you if you'll be the next Velva volleyball coach to have a kid after Molly Turbine and Cassie Peterson, right? Not yet. No. Still enjoying that newlywed stage, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's up to four years. But, I mean, I think it'd be a, a typical trendy thing for somebody to maybe get after. You know, there's always those people about, like, when are you getting married? I know. When, the when are you giving me a of, grandkid or something like yeah, that? Yeah, well, well, I guess a week after the wedding, my parents went down to Fargo and went to Sam's Club, and they walked in, and I guess my dad said to my mom, they saw baby toys in the entryway, and my dad's like, yep, I'm ready to be a, uh, a grandpa, so tell Jocelyn she can get on it. So <laughs> we'll see. 
I always just remind Jocelyn's dad, he has two other kids, so, you know, we don't have to have produce the first grandchild. Yeah, I mean, why, why don't you go talk to them about it? I was going to ask you what you thought of that, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did you do it? <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Carol, with your capacity here, Jocelyn informs me that you had some glory days as a minor high tight end. How, how, yeah. What was that uh, like? Well, so I was a two-year starter at backup tight end, mm-hmm. uh, but what most people don't know, Ben, that I was also a two-year starter at third-string outside linebacker, and I also got some reps on scout team safety. Uh, so kind of a jack-of-all-trades. Uh, there really wasn't any position I couldn't play. I just couldn't play any of them well. What were the coaches that you were kind of close with with the role that you had? Uh, Barry Holman was the head coach at the time. Um, great guy. Um, Jacob, his youngest son, was also a tight end, so we spent a lot of time together. Um, Mike Upton was the O-line coach, so we were with him a lot. Um, and then defensively, we had uh, Jerry Danielson at the time, and um, um, no, um, I can't think of the guy's name, and he teaches with my mom, Mark Jensen. Mm. Um, he was a defensive guy, so. So with it in, like, your playing role, okay, it existed maybe a little bit from time to time for you, but with it, the way that you fit in with the guys, were you sort of just like, you brought the personality to it. Were you like the Pat McAfee where, like, you're not in the marquee position, but everyone likes having Kale along on the team or what? Yeah, I'm what you kind of call a glue guy, Ben. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't do much for the team, but I'm a great teammate to have. Mm-hmm. Who was the toughest uh, player to face, I guess, when you were going through drills or playing in games and whatnot? Um, you know, in practice, I... I and I grew up playing from middle school on with Tanner Dust, um, probably the strongest human being I've ever witnessed in person. Um, and he would, even if you were his friend, he'd kind of manhandle you in practice just to assert dominance. Mm-hmm. Um, so I usually tried to line up on the opposite side of him so I wouldn't have to face him. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jocelyn, this is the question that I ask every runner, and I'll always get an answer from them, but I always keep wondering it. Uh, you ran cross-country and track. How would you not just get, like, burnt out because, like, all your practice is running, you compete, it's running, guess what, off-season, why don't you run some more? <laughs> Honestly, running was the only thing I was good at. Um, I tried, you know, I tried volleyball in middle school, and I made the C-squad, and I was more I was more there in middle school sports to have fun. Um I didn't start, and actually, my seventh grade seventh grade year, I actually was the voice um, stat for co- or for track. So that's kind of how I got into it. And then eighth grade, I was like, why don't I give this running thing a try? And my mom was actually a runner. Um, she ran for rugby, and it, back then it was like rugby ran class A. So my mom was a really good runner for rugby, and I guess it's just kind of in my genes with my mom to to be a runner. And like I said, I had no. No good. Um, I can't even use words here. Um, I just don't have good eye and eye coordination. And eye coordination. Like I could not do basketball. I could not do volleyball in high school. So running was just something that I was always good at, and um, I didn't. I never did place uh, or you know qualify for state track in North Dakota. It was just honestly, it was really hard for class A times, um, especially being a distance runner. I think your mile. When I was in high school, I think the mile was like four minutes and some odd seconds, and I never could crack under five, so it was tough. But um, as far as cross country, I, that's the sport I wish I would have done longer. I only did a junior and senior year. Um, in senior year, I was in a boot for well, almost all of the season, and then I came back and I was able to run at state. But cross country was a little easier to qualify for state. You just had to be the top ten on your team, and you could go to state. And I, I managed to do that both years, so. That's something I took pride in and I was proud of myself for. But, yeah, I was more more just of a runner versus any other sport, I guess. Pretty counterproductive injury to have if you're in a boot and trying to run. I know. It's because I all summer, I remember leading up to senior year, I did not get the miles I was supposed to. And I wore flip-flops all summer, so I um, ended up having plantar fasciitis my senior year. And I think I missed, like, five meets. And then I ran state, and it was snowing in Dickinson that year. I was going to ask, like, did your maybe shorter hand-eye coordination have any factor to that injury at all? Uh, <laughs> nothing I, clutch, I nothing klutzy know. happened? What was that? Nothing klutzy happened? No, not really. I just I just was lazy that summer and did not run like I was supposed to. And then I was in literally like flip-flops leading all the way up to practice. So then when practice started in, 
I think it was beginning of August, I'm sure I ran into issues because I wasn't used to wearing tennis shoes is I think how it kind of led, but I, I just could not get over it um, to the point where I finally had to see Don Mattern for it, and that's when the boot came in and all that fun stuff, but I was determined to get back and at least run at state, so I think my senior year I only ran the first meet, WDA, and state. That's it. Well, I mean, if anybody has never had a lazy summer, then by all means, I guess they can come after you for that. But I think you're all right. That's so, right. Um, speaking of jeans, you were talking about, like, maybe you had it. The, the other kind of jeans that I'm kind of referring to <laughs> here is uh, why would you want to start what you've been up to with uh, Jocelyn's Kinder Creations? You're getting into the – you got a fashion line now? No. Uh, well, I definitely can't sew, but I would say – um, I love to do just like projects with like customization, personalization, however you want to word it. Um, that kind of started, um, last year in the spring, I ended up going to, um, the craft show and I remember walking around some booths and seeing some things like customized tumblers and t-shirts. And I thought, God, I could do that. And, um, literally that day, I, I know I was at the craft show with Kale and we left and I immediately drove to Hobby Lobby and went and bought a cricket and, that's a pretty big purchase. Um, those like those machines run anywhere from two fifty to three fifty, depending on what you're getting, and so it's a big investment. And I remember buying it. And I brought it home, and I had no idea what I was doing. And Kale's like, "Well, you better learn what you're doing. You just spent a bunch of money on this machine." And normally, purchases like that, like I will research and research and research before I finally just pull the plug and buy it. And so, yeah, I had to learn very quickly what I was doing, and I just started posting some things. And before I knew it. Um, my business was kind of launched on Facebook, and that's primarily where it's at. I don't really have interest on selling in selling on like Etsy or anything, just because of like seller fees and things like that that I would have to pay. But um, yeah, my page right now has like I think um, around twelve hundred people in it, which is pretty great considering it started a year ago. But yeah, it's really taken off. It's been a great side gig. I've done a lot of different um, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, like you name it. I've pretty much done it. It's pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, I'm very blessed to be where I am now. And I was currently working on an order actually for, um, shirts being shipped to Kuwait for 10, um, military guys. So it's pretty cool that it's reaching that far now. I was thinking just like on the name Kinder Creations, do you Mm -hmm. have any of your students wearing your stuff or like, do you see something that they have and you think that'd be a cool idea to customize and make like for that? Yeah, so, like, my first year um, teaching, so I, the business kind of started in May, so it was, like, it was, like, right around when we got engaged and stuff, I ended up making, that's kind of how it started, too, I made 30 t-shirts, I think, or 35 or something like that, for all of the kindergartners that said, uh, peace out, kindergarten, and then it said, like, class of, I think it was 2031 on the back of the shirt, and I still see that now those kids are in second grade, and I still see some of them walking around school with their shirt that I made them, so I'm like, wow, it's good to know that my product holds up two yeah. years later, it's kind of crazy, um, so yeah, it's it's really um, come a long way, it's, it's un, unreal, to be honest, like, yeah, that's awesome. You know, I'd be worried about, like, putting the wrong year on it or something. Yeah, yeah, I did I have to Google. To so this year, I don't know. It's it's hard doing T-shirts for that many kids. But this year, we'll probably do some other kind of cool end-of-the-year gift water bottles. This last year, we did, they got us um, a sand bucket with their name on it that I made them all. All right. Quick turn here to Kale. Uh, this is another one of your moments that I wanted to ask about. Um Big day for you at a local tournament here. What were the keys to success for your team as you traveled through that massive bracket at the Ranger Cornhole Tournament? It's, it's hard to touch on the keys to success, Ben, because Kevin and I did not have much success. Oh. Um, we showed up We showed up at, at, the, at the exact time they opened the doors, um, started drinking beers, um, chose not to practice because that would be a waste of time because you don't have as much time to drink beers before your game then. Um, we ended up playing the same team twice and losing to them twice. So, um, my advice to anybody looking to play in that tournament would be, um, don't drink as many beers as Kevin and I did. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you might've seen this guy. I was at, uh, and I, whenever I bring it up, people are like, yes, we've heard this before. I, I went to the poor farm and I won a tournament there for it. And my partner, he was, his name was Frank. He's probably, he looks like me, but just older, you know, short, ginger-headed guy, you know, and uh, he was a freaking tank. He was doing 
minimum three in the hole every single time. And I think, like, I held my weight up enough to be like, I'm not being totally carried and whatnot. But was he there? Do you know who the champs were? Uh, yeah, the champs were two two dudes in, like, their 30s from Bismarck. They, uh, they travel around, like, the state and even some other, other states and do tournaments. They, they were really good. They crushed everybody. Well, I guess that kind of makes sense because, like, the very first sport to come back on TV was, like, the ACL Cornhole League when they were wearing all the gator scarves and stuff. But you're saying that we have travelers that throw bags around here. Yeah, they have their own Facebook page, but I'm not going to plug them because they beat us. So, oh, um, obviously, first but, yeah, rounder. They take it really seriously. Mm-hmm. Something you guys obviously have to take seriously and you have to be passionate about it too. Has all like the projects that you've done around your house, tell us a little bit about the transformation for your home improvement that you guys have been able to do so far. Yeah, so we bought our house um, last July. We closed on it. I think it was like a Thursday or Friday. We closed um, before we were even, like, as soon as we got the keys, we literally came in and started ripping out carpet in our upstairs living room. Uh, Ripped out carpet, painted the walls a different color, and we put down, like, a wood laminate flooring. Um, It is completely, I mean, the room is just a completely different room. I don't know how to word that. It's just... Kale. I'm brighter in here now. I'm trying to think of words. But, um, and then just uh, a few weeks ago, we ended up putting uh, reset lights in this living room. We hired that out, and that was a good project. And then Kale, he can talk a little bit about the basement because he loves to talk about how long it took him to paint those walls. Yeah, I was going to yeah. ask, why didn't you want to keep the mint green basement and save the time? I, I tried so hard for about two months to convince myself I didn't hate it, um, and I finally just couldn't do it anymore. Um, so I, ha- I had to do something about it, even though I despise painting. Mm-hmm. So, uh, did it kind of come out exactly how you wanted it? For the most part, yeah. Um, you know, when we we looked at the house a couple times before we bought it, and, um, you know, there's that corner in the basement where I put the bar in. I kind of had that plan all along, so it's kind of an awkward corner. Um, so my dad helped me do the flooring and stuff for that. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, everything's come along how we wanted it to. Where did you kind of find the ideas for, like, do you you – research something at like home depot or whatever do you look at a magazine or where'd you come up with it from um well like i said i knew i wanted to uh put in a bar and so i, I chose to paint the basement a, a brown color because i my favorite bar is the ranger lounge the best bar in my not um you know and so it kind of has a feel of a bar like that god gotcha. you know, kind of a hole in the wall type feel mm-hmm. yeah but all the holes in the wall are fixed at your place now right by nowadays yeah no, no new holes since we moved in. And the basement, in the, uh, our basement living room is just an awkward length. It's uh, 11 feet across by 39 feet long, so it's huge. Um, but yeah, we can really fit a good amount of people down there. We've had friends over a few times, and we're fortunate to have the space in our basement and spread out, not feel like you're on top of each other. And our friends like using the bar and our uh, ping pong table that we have from my aunt. And yeah, it's really come together quite nicely and. We know that this is not our forever house, but we enjoy doing projects here and there to what we call help make the resale value a little better someday when we sell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I had a great time at the Super Bowl there. and That's went, right. Exactly. So then I guess if you ever do get a hole in the wall, it's going to be some kind of war story after getting home from the Ranger or what? Yeah, probably. I can see that happening. <laughs> I, I haven't fallen down the stairs yet, so... Oh, you know, I take it back. I did fall down the stairs once, but not because of beers, because I slipped and I was wearing some slippery socks. And I yeah, we do have carpet on the stairs. I, we've talked about replacing it with hardwood or, like, a laminate to see. Maybe that would help someday the resale value as well. Oh, well, you got to keep it slippy. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, a slide instead. We could put one in. The stairs are pretty steep at our house, I thought. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't do it just because I said to do it, all right? Okay. All right, but, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, uh, guys, I really appreciate you, like, wanting to hop on the show here and making some time. Uh, until next time, when Jocelyn is that next volleyball coach to have a grandkid just for the <laughs> sake of the, the rest of the family here that are just freaking clamoring for it, maybe maybe it'll be a different story here the next time we chat. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Kale and Jocelyn McHenry. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thanks,